your career to new heights with constructive curiosity. Whether it's career coaching, mental performance training, or business management consulting, Constructive Curiosity has the insight to get it right. Visit ConstructiveCuriosity.com to get started today. Hello and welcome into Talking Bengals. It is another exciting edition of the offseason, brought to you by being bored out of our minds, because not a whole heck of a lot is happening, but we will keep you entertained and we'll get this show on the road here. So we got Burns and Hoop with us this week, Wave, gentlemen, and we'll jump right into our first topic. So we can stop talking about T. Higgins for a while after tonight because he has been franchise tagged. So, Nick, talk to us about T and his franchise. Tag um, Thank God they finally franchise tagged him. Um, so everybody can just be quiet about it all now. Now everybody. Yeah, but now everybody's like, oh, we're going to trade him to go get Justin Jefferson or, um, you know, uh, ah, come on. Like, oh. we're, we're keeping, we're going to keep T for this year, um, probably extend him after this year. You know, just, just, we're the Bengals, okay? Look at what the Bengals have done historically. That's most likely what they're going to want to do. They tag him and then they'll extend him, you know, indefinitely, probably you know, to a some form of a friendly contract between him and the team. Then they'll extend Jamar Chase. And I oh honestly I don't know what this means for Joe Mixon, but quite honestly, I hope the best for the guy, but I think he's kind of out the door because of it. Zach. Well I may make a lot of jokes about you know, trading him and going to get Justin Jefferson on on the socials. But let's be honest, Duke Tobin said it today. The intent of this franchise tag was to keep him long term. So I hope that's what we do. I hope we get to keep T really long time. Um, I think he's up there to the caliber of a Justin Jefferson to compliment Jamar Chase. Uh, so, uh, I mean, he's not Justin Jefferson. By any means, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that he could be up there. You know, look at his 2020, 2021, 22, those seasons. Um, He was he was doing the thing. So um, I'm glad that we got to keep him. Run it back one more time with the squad. Don't see us getting to Tyler Boyd though. You know, to completely the uh, the full run it back, but that's okay. I, I wish him all the best as well. So. Uh, but to Nick's point about Mixon, you know, I, I think a lot of people want to bring Mixon back. Um, I am one of those people, but I also feel that we're going to be okay at running back because it's an underutilized position uh, in this day and age of the NFL. And I also feel that we'll be okay with Jamar or uh, with Chase Brown. So we'll see what happens. You know, there's also a guy named Derrick Henry out there too. No. I would rather have Joe Mixon over Derrick no. Henry. Casey, what do you think about this T. Higgins being franchise tagged? So T. Higgins are going to franchise him, run it back one more time, and then he's going to walk away. That is that is what's going to happen because the agent whispering in T. Higgins' ear is the same one that whispered in Jesse Bates' ear. You're worth so much more money. And then he'll go to a crappy team and make – Two million dollars a year more, or something that you know is really not that big of a deal, and he'll never sniff as another Super Bowl opportunity again, more than likely. That, that's honestly how it's going to go. If he wants wide receiver one money, who's going to see him as the number one wide receiver? Not great teams, teams that are Panthers. desperate. Yeah, the Panthers. Do you want to go to the Panthers and make more money? No, Dallas, Dallas, they got, Green Bay, they got CD Dallas, Lamb. They afford him. Dallas is always like going to have a Jerry's salary. always got money. Yeah, but there's a salary cap for a reason, so Jerry's not the – They just increased the salary cap. I'm, all I'm saying is Dallas is not a team historically that manages their salary cap very well. They sink a bunch of money into bad investments. Prescott. Yeah, Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, <laughs> for a while, several other players. But I just – I don't see that coming. I, I like T. I wish he would take a team-friendly deal because I think he's a great – person on the team but that dumb agent's just going to keep whispering in his ear hey you're worth so much more than this go play in arizona go play and in, insert other place you don't want to play in right now new england you know hey they have a new coach 
go to Carolina or Tampa Bay. Still have Mac Jones. <laughs> yeah, like to the Raiders. Yeah, yeah. You no, can get hold on, hold on, hold on. You said you said Tampa. I, I Tampa actually kind of makes a little bit of sense to me. Who's Baker, their quarterback? He's not Baker. For how long? He he. I think he's got a, he's got another year. On, he's got at least another deal year on his deal. So I mean, he's like maybe twenty twenty five. We'll see what twenty twenty four holds for Baker. But I mean, that I wouldn't hate it. You know, Baker Baker got out of Cleveland, so I can't hate on Baker because he owns Ohio State. So I mean, I guess on the Mixon topic now. So we talk about T for Mixon. Here's my question to you: If the Bengals cut Mixon. Will he get signed anywhere? He is an eighth-year running back. Will anybody else sign him? Are the Bengals, or is he the Joey Votto of the Bengals, where no one's going to sign him because he's past his prime and old? It's going to cry. It's okay, Zach. Bring it in. Mental hug. Cut, cut me deep. Cut me deep, Case. Cut Do me a deep. court in the last 156 games of his career. Hey. One year, 25 mil, let's go. I'm just saying. Or, excuse me, not 25, 5 mil. One year, 5 mil. Wow. Okay. No, because we'll he was supposed to get – Anyway, back to Mixon. Back, back to Mixon. All right, so as far as Mixon, <laughs> teams that make sense. Lewis, no, wait. Just kidding. St. Louis doesn't have a team. The Rams. <laughs> the Battle Hawks. <laughs> <Battle Hubs. laughs> You're going with AJ McCarron to the Battle Hawks. Sorry, I, still can't get you, used, I, can't, I still can't use, get used to the Rams being in freaking L.A. They're, it's still the St. Louis Rams. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's a point. Here's a, to Casey's point, right? You have a guy named Todd Gurley still in his 20s, younger than Derrick Henry, not played in the league in three years, about to be four, still in his 20s. That's the state of the running back core right now across the NFL league. So eight year Joe Mixon, four years of the last how many? Five? Was it five? Four of the last five thousand yard rushing? Yeah, but I mean uh, that, that stat doesn't mean quite as much as it used to. You have an extra game. He's limped to the thousand yards how many times now? Like last sure. season. Oh, I got a thousand yards against the Browns fifth string players. For sure. Um, I, I'm i going to throw New England out there. I know Belichick's gone, but what are they going to do? Carolina, yeah, would, Carolina might make sense, too. Uh, yeah. What's Washington got going on? Oh, really, they got Brian Robinson. But A.J. Dillon's out there. There's several other good running backs out there that are cheaper. I don't know if Joe's going to want to come back, go to another team for barely anything. I mean, if Bengals cut him, he's looking at 1.5 to 2.5 at the most. He's going to get anywhere if he gets any offers. But he's also, yeah, he's double-digit touchdowns last year, over 1,000 yards. He had zero explosiveness. Yeah, but zero explosiveness. And how many of those touchdowns looked like, you know, um, and then – who the guy I'm trying to think of? An aging person for a team that I despise, who they only put him in for goal line rushing attempts, and he get touched. I was like, yeah, the bus still rolls. And it's like, yeah, he ran one yard. Congratulations. That's what Mixon's starting to remind me of. He just gets hit, falls forward, but if he falls forward in the end zone, everybody's happy with him. Which doesn't make sense. Nick, what are your thoughts on that? Honestly. I wouldn't be opposed to keeping Joe Mixon. Um, I don't like the amount of money that we had had to give him to keep him. Um, you know, you know, maybe lower because he's going to make a heck of a lot of money. He's going to make a heck of a lot less money elsewhere if he doesn't stay. So use that as a bargaining and say, hey, Joe, we'd still love to keep you because we think you still do have value for our team. Um, we think that the future in our running back core is going to be Chase Brown. We will give you an, an an extra, I don't know, million, million and a half if you play or coach Chase Brown a little bit to help him out. You know, like, yes, you are getting towards the end of your career. 
we love the fact that you're a workhorse and that you know we can always count on you to fall forward but at the same token we need chase brown to be coached up you know help us out you help us we'll help you well i mean the problem with that is if they do bring him back for less money he's still taking carries from somebody that's the future of the franchise he is not the future he's definitely the past but the Bengals, they don't understand how to gradually walk away from a guy. They're going to continue to use what they know because that's what they've always done, and it's comfortable. It's what they think's okay. It's what they're used to. But you're getting a lesser and lesser product. If they keep him for the money that they owe him right now, Duke Tobin needs to be fired because he obviously does not know how to manage a budget. I know that's a, oh, you've never been in the front office. Yeah, dude, I know how to manage a budget, though. You have an ancient asset who is not going to get any better. Is he going to get faster this year? No. Is he going to get more explosive? No. Is his yards per carry going to go up more than likely? I would say, you know, 60 to 90% chance somewhere in there. No. Could that somehow magic happen and the line can block way better and they just open massive holes? Sure. But, I mean, if we're talking about that dream world, all the defense is just going to lay down and let the Bengals score a touchdown every time they have the ball. So it, <laughs> we've got to talk about reality or else what are we talking about here? I mean, you're talking about explosiveness. Chase Brown has the explosiveness. I mm -hmm. mean, you saw how fast the guy can run. There's only one person in the league that ran, that could run as fast or faster than him. That's Tyreek Hill. I mean, they're like jackrabbits. As soon as they get the ball and they get in the open field, there's no one touching them. You got, you, you got to go with what you can see as being the future. And I think Chase Brown taking the majority of the carries, and you know still utilizing joe mix and i think balancing that out i think that they can do a balancing act but like you're saying i don't think that that i don't think that if we should keep them i don't think that we should keep them for the price tag and what they're going to pay for them because you could for the same amount of money you could draft a second to fourth round running back to you know give some competition to chase brown and you could sign an aj Dillon, a clyde edwards lair or somebody like that who is a veteran has experience and could quite possibly have a renaissance. Does everybody remember Cedric Benson? The league wrote, wrote him off like, okay, he's done. He's not doing well in these last two stops. And then he tore it up for the Bengals for what, two years, three years? Did really well. So that could happen again. All you got to do is really get that one guy free agent to step up this season and do a you know a mix of a Nicky Woods, James Brooks, and Stanley Wilson without the drugs. And that can get you back to the Super Bowl. They really can. Sorry, I had to say it. <laughs> Without, the drugs. Without the drugs. Show up to the Super Bowl, kids. If you make it, show up to the Super Bowl. So with Joe Mixon, you mentioned Cedric Benson, Cedric Benson resurgence. Why can't Joe Mixon be that resurgence in 2024 in your mind? My mind? Too much tread on the tires. He's just been run into the ground. He's taken so many carries the last couple of years that he's just not the same running back that he used to be. He used to be an explosive and he could, you know, cut and juke and make things happen. But he just doesn't have that fire, I don't feel like, anymore. He's doing the best he can, but I just don't see it. And he's not going to have the Cedric Benson type of situation where you're coming into a team on the rise. More than likely. No, I don't think anybody's going to on the rise is going to sign him. If he goes somewhere, it's going to be a garbage time team, Carolina. New England, somebody like that. So, Nick, I have a question for you. Is it so much Joe Mixon is got tread on the tires or are running low, or is it the offensive line run game? I think it's a little bit of both. And, I mean, that does kind of lead into, like, what we're looking to talk to about next. Um, Joe Mixon, he has shown that he can hit a hole. Um, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think that um, when you look at Joe Mixon, when he first started out in the league with us, um, when he'd hit a hole, he'd be hitting it high stepping, right? And he was breaking tackles, getting away from people. He was able to make people miss, right? Even he'd be able to hit, hit somebody and keep moving. What we're seeing more now in the last year or so, we're seeing Joe Mixon scooting his feet through the line of scrimmage instead of high stepping the way you used to. 
And we're not seeing that explosive power through the hole to where he's able to break free. So when the line does block and does open up that hole for him, you know, we see that, you know, 10, 15, 20 yard carry, but we don't see that breakaway Joe Mixon speed that we were used to when he, you know, when he came in the league. Now, look at the other side of the things. Chase Brown, he has the breakaway speed. He gets to a hole, somebody doesn't touch him. You might as well just count as a touchdown. Again, the man's gone, right? Ain't nobody catching him. Um, so that does kind of play into the offensive line part. And I think that one of the key issues for the Bengals is the offensive line. Joe Mixon, he's going to run the ball, and he's going to get 10, 15 yards a carry if there's a hole there, right? Chase Brown might break a, a lot for a touchdown if he gets or at least 20, 30 yards down the field, you know, in case, you know, one of the defenders have a good per- pursuit angle. Joe Burrow, our biggest investment in ever in Cincinnati, if you're going to invest that much money in one person and a talent, you got to protect the man. And when you have your quarterback either being pressured, sacked, or taken to the ground as much as what Joe Burrow's been taken to the ground, ridiculous. I mean, I grant it. Now we can't be like the Chiefs and literally hug the defenders to hold them away from Joe Burrow like they do for Patrick Mahomes. But um, you got to find somebody who has skill. I mean, not necessarily the people that you're going to pay the highest dollars have the best skill you know they just have had more screen time i guess you know they've they've had more video taken of them and them on the field so you know good skill and good fundamentals go a long way and i do think that coming either out of this draft or somebody who is an unsigned free agent who got let cut who got cut loose from a team i think we could find a huge value there on the offensive line now, I think our biggest problem on the offensive line, looking at the common denominator in the past since 2021, is Frank. He needs to be fired. Right? We have had guys that we brought in that were top performers. On the teams that they, that they came from, we signed Orlando Bloom Jr. Or, or, uh, OBJ. Whatever his name is. Brown Jr. I don't I, think Orlando I, Bloom or his child, if that's his name, would be intimidating as an offensive lineman or football player. I'm just saying. Oh my goodness. Orlando Brown Jr., whatever. Get out of here. <laughs> I've had a day today. I've had I had I've had one heck of a day. Leave me alone. All right. This is not our primary jobs, guys. We have day jobs. Believe us, we will keep them. Um, that's it. Running through the name of this episode now is the legend of Orlando Bloom Jr. <laughs> Anyways. But, I mean, we bring in guys who have been able to show that they can perform. Well, what's the common denominator in all of that? The offensive line coach. The offensive line coach has, has proven time and time again that his blocking schemes has just hasn't been up to par for NFL standards. Because, obviously, the, the, the defensive coordinators and the defensive line coaches and, defensive, and the linebackers coaches have been able to see what they're doing in their blocking schemes and just consistently beating them time and time again. So something's got to change, and you take out the common denominator and put something else in there. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen this year, though. It, it, it's pretty set, so we're going to have to deal with them again for this whole season. They did bring in the passing game coordinator who used to be on an offensive line staff. Hopefully he helps out, but let's look at what the Bengals – offensive line is going to look like. So basically three positions, in my opinion, are 100% set. Orlando Brown's going to be there, Cap is going to be there, and Karras is going to be there. People would say Bolson, but I don't feel 100% solid that you can't sign a better guard and Bolson's now a swing backup. So you have two spots potentially in the offensive line to fill because Jonah, thank you for playing. Enjoy the rest of your career wherever you go. Make a lot of money to be an average tackle. Good for you. Live the dream. The Battle Hawks. <laughs> oh, Orlando Bloom Jr. and the Battle Hawks. 
There we go. Hey, okay. Hold on. Hold on. While we're on this, right? So I just did a quick Google search to see if there was an Orlando Bloom Jr. And apparently, Nick is not the only one that has done this because <laughs> the very first article that pops up is report Orlando Brown Jr. agrees to a huge four-year deal with Bengals March 15, 2023. So he's not too far off from the rest of the population, according to Google. Who who put that one up? That's my question. Uh, average. Is that was uh, <laughs> WFLA.com. So. Okay. Wow. That's as bad as the person from Tennessee saying, we want T to come here with a picture of Alex Kappa. And I was like, how do you get it that wrong? I mean, I, yeah, yeah. There's no similarity between those two individuals, different positions, different size, different everything. Like, how just do a quick google search but anyways we digress back to it so if you look at there is another free agent that the Bengals had last year cody ford come back cheap don't come back at all i don't care either way it's fine with me he's fine but he's not he's not going to make that big of a difference i don't feel like you can get a another competent backup for about the same price so whatever but bolson is a bigger concern for me even than the vacant tackle position because I feel like you can bring in a vacant. It's vacant. Nobody's taking that job right now. That's on the roster. Jackson Carmen just cut him. There's no reason to keep him around. He's not progressed. He's not gotten better. He was a bust and a terrible draft pick, that, which proves my point. Don't draft offensive he, linemen. He did well in the playoff run to the Super Bowl. Give him his credit. Like Up until the Super Bowl, he did well once he started filling that position. But then after that, yeah, I 100% like it just – it, well it or service. There's, there's a difference. Well or service. Touché. Touché. If you look at the playoff run, the Super Bowl season, the offense sucked. If you, you want to be flat out and come to it, you barely squeaked by the Raiders with a couple touchdowns. You The defense beat Tennessee for you. And then um, the AFC Championship game, Samaje Piran put the team on his back for a little bit and won that game in certain parts, and the defense won it for you. So the offense, he was serviceable. He wasn't – we didn't play well. Well to me is you're able to put up actual points as an offense. During that entire playoff run, they couldn't put up real points. It just didn't happen. Like I said, there was a few touchdowns here or there in the – like the AFC title game, but how many of those were broken for longer plays? Like the pier one was literally a screen, and then he just took off for like 40 yards. So I don't know. I, I'm a Jackson Carmen hater. I'll be 100 percent out there. As soon as they drafted him, I was like, feels like a bad idea. And that's why I have no people say, yeah, I get a first round tackle. This organization has not drafted an offensive lineman that's been worth a crap since Whitworth and Zeitler. That's a long time ago. A very long time ago. So I don't know if I want to be like, this is a draft you can't miss. This entire offseason. If you want to win a Super Bowl, you can't miss. You want to roll the dice that they finally figure out how to scout an offensive tackle? I, I sure don't. I'd rather pay the known commodity. If that's your big free agent splash, big ish, like you know, you get the fourth best, fifth best tackle in, out there right now, I'll take it. You know what the guy is, you know what he's going to prove. Draft a day two, day three offensive tackle, develop him behind, you know, Orlando Brown Jr. and this guy, whoever they sign, and then we good to go. Yeah, I, I only blue. left. Darn I, you, Bernsey. Darn you. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say blue, but I, I was thinking it, so I left. <laughs> as soon as he said Orlando, I was like, oh, God, he's going to say it. <laughs> no. Some of us know how to turn up to him talk well. <laughs> Speaking of people's names that I don't remember, uh, the dude from uh, – Vegas. Punt team, yeah. No, not the punt team from Vegas that <laughs> supports Joe Burrow. Yeah, and I don't remember the name crap. I, I don't remember his name, but he put out a nice tweet. You know, is he a, I think he's going in a free agent free agency this year. I mean, he's a veteran tackle, kept Derek Carr up for a few years. I don't know what to do with my hands, Nick. All right. I'm just excited. Yeah. Just just yeah, yeah, right back up here. So um Trying to think of what else you could do. I, I I'm kind of in agreement with Casey. I don't think you spend a first round draft pick on an offensive tackle. 
Uh, again, we're going to do mock drafts down the road, so don't want to dive too too deep into the draft. But um, I think the only other thing I could think of, maybe a second-round guy uh, and a third-round guard at most. Um, but you got. I think you got to go get it all right tackle off off the free agency. Somebody that is a veteran that has been consistent and that could help uh, Orlando Brown Jr. Uh, lead the offensive line. I mean, we've got great capstones in Kappa and, and Karras and Brown, but you got to have one on each side, on the outside, to keep Joe up. Or, or now, I know this is crazy. Oh, Lord. What about – putting Orlando Brown Jr. over at the right tackle where he was used to playing. And Podium Automotive is a proud sponsor of Talkin' Bengals. In greater Cincinnati, it's Podium Automotive for all your auto needs. Skilled technicians, quality service you can trust, and fair prices. Tell us Talkin' Bengals sent you and get 5% off all services. Schedule your appointment today on Facebook at Podium Automotive or call 859-869-0097. That's 859-869-YOUNG-0097. Playing a left tackle. He wants to be a left tackle. He's played both sides in his career, his career, but he came here, got paid to be a left tackle. I don't want to tick off that guy. I feel like he had an injury-riddled year where they weren't big injuries, but just enough to be nagging and causing problems. <clears throat> no way I'm moving him from the left side. You know, I think we just I, don't think we should, I was just throwing it out there. Don't 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 bite my head off. I was just tossing. Yeah, Where's the mute button? Where's the PT? P, uh, not PTI around the horn. Mute button. Mute for ten seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, you what you just said is meant it's all dumber. You are awarded no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> oh Oh, goodness. All right, so offensive line talk. Is there any other thoughts you guys want to bring up? Nick's to recap, Fire Frank signed a guy who played in Pirates of the Caribbean, son, if he has one. And Zach's thoughts, you know, just find somebody in free agency through it. Anything else y'all want to touch on? Not on the offensive line, no. So, Zach, bring us the headlines off of X today that you sent us over chat. Ooh, all right. So, um, first things first, the Falcons released tight end Janu Smith. What do you guys think about maybe perhaps going to get a guy that's caught 50 passes for 532 yards and three touchdowns last season in a abysmal Falcons offense? What's his projected contract? That's my question. Um, again, not saying that it's going to be um, like anything lucrative because the numbers aren't necessarily there. Uh, but he played much better than the guy they drafted from Florida. That I could damn sure tell you that. Dang it, there I go. Uh, well, I got However, however um, I think it would be kind of team friendly it could be an upgrade from Irv Smith Jr. Um, what wouldn't be an upgrade from Irv Smith Jr.? I mean why not let Tanner Hudson go you know everybody keeps talking about going into the draft and going to get Bowers I don't see Bowers falling to 18 not a chance I I don't know. He's six two, not six four. do you see that that's what the combine said he's 6'2 not 6'4 oh Still doesn't matter. He's still not going to fall to 18. He's he's an animal. I don't know if Nick is frozen down there or if he's reading. So, reading. Okay, put him in the corner. He's upset. Yeah, fair enough. All right, so that's comment number one. So, Nick, what do you think about Smith? Do you think you go pay him or or let him walk? Let him go somewhere else? I'm talking about Herb Smith? No, Janu Smith from oh. Atlanta that just got released. I mean, I think that it could be a good pickup. Um, obviously, the guy's talented, talented, but at the same token, do we want to spend our money there, or would we rather spend our money somewhere that might be more beneficial? Because we do have some tight ends that can catch a ball. 
So when you say more beneficial, would you say the secondary, which is going to lead us into our next uh, talking point, which would be Duke Tobin saying Dax Hill can play corner, nickel, and both safety positions. <clears throat> but can he play anything well? <laughs> sorry, sorry. I say you can play it. I can play it. But am I going to do could, it well? <laughs> I could do those positions too, but, I mean, I'm probably not going to be your first or – even last pick there, but I even at the same time. token, like I don't agree with what Duke Tobin said. Um, I I don't believe that Dax Hill is a is a great you know star defensive back um, at the free safety position. Maybe put him down on a slot and more of zone coverage, possibly. Um, don't know. I, I think I think we would be better served by um, spending more money in the defensive backfield than on a tight end. Casey, I say get a real safety. I mean, I love to be proved wrong when I say Bengals players are not good or they don't have potential. Man, if you come out and you have a Pro Bowl season next year, not Pro Bowl, All Pro, even bet. Let's just dream big here. All Pro season, Dax Hill. I'm going to be the happiest guy around. I'm not going to be like, oh, man, I was wrong. Please prove me wrong. I'm a Bengals fan. I want every Bengals player to be the best player they can be. But I also call it like I see it. You know, I'm not from Missouri, but you got to show me. Like, it just is what it is. And he's not that guy right now. And the fact that your defensive coordinator literally was calling you out in press conferences, that's embarrassing. And for being in different leadership positions, not in the same industry, if I called somebody out in front of a group of people, you done messed up way more than once. You've caused a lot of issues, and I'm sending a shot across the bow at you. Basically, like, I don't know what else to do, and I can't cover for you right now because you continue to make this mistake. And maybe public humiliation will help. I'm not usually a fan of that, but that's a last resort at times. you got to make a do with what you got. Yeah, I'd spend some money on a veteran safety. Bring somebody in and make competition. Even if, you know, Dax ends up winning the job, have a real competition. Don't bring in, you know, the guy on his last leg. Don't bring back Uncle Mike. And be like, hey, you know, you get another shot at this. No, he doesn't. He's a wonderful human being. He's going to be a fantastic football coach, Mike Thomas, when he decides to hang it up for real. But <clears throat> he's not competition. That You might as well just bring one of us off the bench. He's not going to really compete against Dax Hill. Great guy, wonderful human being, perfect football mind. He's going to do great things, whatever he wants to do at football. But it's not football. As far as playing, it's just not. So bring in a real safety to compete with him. As far as the tight end, everybody's like, oh, we need a superstar tight end. We need the next Kelsey or Kittle or something like that. This guy from Atlanta is not that. And if you're going to bring in another serviceable tight end, you've already got two of them with a – uh, what's the face sample and Hudson? Just Guess what? You just proved that advertising on podcasts works. Reach thousands of local listeners each week and grow your business. Reach out to Talking Bengals today to find out more by emailing talkingbengals at gmail.com. Why well, bring in somebody new? That's going to be the same amount of talent, in my opinion. If you can hit a home run with somebody, great. Go for that guy. Like Brock Bowers, if he does fall. Sure, why not? But otherwise, you're just literally bringing in another warm body. That can do the same thing as the other warm bodies could. So what does it matter? So to finish out the quote uh, on Duke Tobin about Dax Hill, it says it's going to be up to the coaches to how they think he can best perform. So um, like a glowing endorsement. We're going to, it's like the Oreo complex. We're going to make you feel good, but then we're going to make you not feel as good. And then be like, but make you kind of feel good. So uh, moving on, Duke Tobin was talking about Joe Mixon. I know we talked on it a little bit, uh, but he said that he was an amazing for us in 2023, but really just kind of declined to comment on what would 2024 look like. So uh, I would just want to close that out with Joe Mixon's contract. Um, he is projected, if he gets all of this stuff, it'll be $6.1 million for 2024. Um, but if we cut him, the dead cap is 2.75. So I think parting with him might open up the door for, for other opportunities, uh, but keeping him, 
not necessarily a bad thing either. I think we. I think we kind of beat that horse uh, earlier in our conversations. For uh, sure, just wanted to give it give it some roundabout. So. Yeah, definitely think so we beat that horse already. He got three days into the league year, if I remember right, before his roster bonus hits. So they got to make up their mind, what, within the next two and a half weeks? I think it starts second week of March. I'd have to look it up. But, yeah, so it's not like they can linger on this very long. It's not like you can wait till June after the draft and be like, yeah, we're just going to cut him. So that's a $3 million roster bonus. That's half the money he's going to make. So, in my opinion, and that's not trying to be mean. I'm a Joe Mixon fan. He's been one of my favorite players since he's been in the Bengals uniform. But you know what? Bengals have had to cut all my favorite players over the years. It is what it is. It's a business, and I care more about them winning a Super Bowl than any one particular player. All right, what other fun headlines do you have for us? All right, uh, the last one was the news coming straight from the Bengals, um, signing offensive assistant Jordan Salkin, uh, defensive assistant Ronnie Regula, and special teams assistant Ben Jacobs. Any uh, improvement there? Anybody that you guys recognize? No, so three guys, that's the first time I've heard their name. And it'll probably be the last time I hear their name unless they go get a coaching job somewhere else next year, the year after. I'm like, oh, this guy left. And we're like, he was on the staff? Well, so Salkin uh, comes to Cincinnati from the University of Oregon where he spent 2023 as an offensive analyst. Uh, and then he was per, uh, previously served as an offensive quality control coach with the Dolphins in 2021. Uh, Regula had nine cool. years of coaching experience at the collegiate ranks. He spent the last two years as a senior defensive analyst at the University of Notre Dame. Um, and then he was the OC, OQC coach for both the Miami, Florida in 21 and the University of Tennessee in 2020. And Jacob, they sucked. Okay. Right. I mean, they still do. I mean, you lost to Michigan. I, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Jacob spent the last five seasons as an assistant special teams coach with Carolina Panthers uh, and the Washington Commanders. And interesting enough, he played linebacker for in the NFL from 2011 to 2018 with 73 career games for the Browns and Carolina. No way we're going to know who he is. Yeah, right. All right. What's the next topic? <laughs> Anyways, I think we're on. Is that the last Twitter one you got for us or X as the kids call it? Uh, so we had three X and one straight from the bangles.com. So that was it. All right. Cool. Down. So now. Talking about people that no one remembers or ever heard of before, it is Who Day History. Get on this fabulous edition of Who Day History, brought to you by whoever wants to be our sponsor on the next episode. Just give us a call. We'll sign you up, and we'll promote you here every week with our Who Day History segment. But this week, we dive into Kevin Casebehorn. He sounds like an obscure Bengal already. So, a little bit about Kevin. Birds, go ahead. All right. Well, Kevin, <laughs> pulling it up here, played with the Bengals <laughs> from 2001 to 2006. Um, uh, yeah. Career interception 17, 15 of those in Cincinnati, two of those in New Orleans, and that pretty much sums up the sums it up for me. Shout yeah, out to Obscure know. Bengals for uh sharing him on the uh the instagram reels earlier this week to kind of spark our who day history this week nick what do you think i used to like kevin case um you know when he played for the Bengals, uh he was you know solid enough i mean he was definitely not one of the worst defensive backs that we've ever had um but also at the same token i wouldn't put him as one of the best um you know, he played here for, you said, six years. So, I mean, that was probably one of the more troubling troubling years that we had here in Cincinnati. Um, definitely not the 90s, but still. Um, it was 
rough years. But I mean, Case Baharn was not a bad not a bad spot in those years. So Casey does have a very not fond memory of Kevin Case Baharn, but. I remember him mostly because of the unique last name and, um, you know, just, I, I do remember him, um, you know, getting a, getting a few key turnovers in games. So I have fond memories. Casey doesn't. Yeah. And I mean, I'm trying to verify it and double check it, but I swear he had a couple really big blown coverages against the Steelers in the 0506 playoff game. I want to say it was him on the Antoine Randall L like wide receiver pass that just forgot how to play safety. And the guy just ran right by him. He's like, Oh, I'm I'm covering this guy. And then he catches a touchdown. I believe you're correct. So I I don't want to throw the part around to the bus. You know, he came from Augustine, which is a division two school. So good on him. He did was originally undrafted. He fought his way up talking about some, was it barnstormers? The Iowa barnstormers. That is first team. Yeah. So he was a barnstormer, then made it to the Bengals. So the Bengals will scout you no matter where you are, apparently. They will find you if you're talented enough to let Antoine Randall L make you look silly. I'm sorry, Kevin Case. Well, I did actually like you as a player. You're one of the like, safeties I liked because I was trying to play safety at that point in my life, which why anybody thought I could ever have the skills to play secondary, I don't know. I'm, I'm much better with a clipboard or a microphone, so keep me off the field. It's a, it's a better call. But well, if, if, if you want a uh, a true highlight, you just need to go to obscure underscore Bengals. Watch the Kevin Case for Horn uh, highlights. You see him get an interception against Keyshawn Johnson when Keyshawn was in Carolina, of all places. If anybody remembers Keyshawn in, <laughs> in Carolina. We're talking about um, aging Keyshawn at that point. So he's no longer in New York, no longer in Tampa. He's... That's like saying you got an interception. Not longer in jump. Dallas. It was even after <laughs> Dallas. We're going to talk about getting a, an interception on Chad when he played for the Patriots. I mean, it's just not. Or even better, we're going to talk about Jerry Rice in the Chiefs or the Seahawks or anywhere hey, else. He was still like, productive with the Seahawks. He, you can't you can't knock him when he was in Seattle because he was still being productive there. Now, the Chiefs, on the other hand, not so much. It was kind of like Joe Montana with the Chiefs. You just just hang it up at a certain point. I mean, oh, gosh. Right, why not? It's the offseason. We're going into it. Even though I hate all 49ers with a passion, I do have to respect Jerry Rice. And if he is the best receiver in the history of the NFL, if you don't agree, you're an idiot. I, I don't know any way to put it. His <laughs> stats don't lie. His career doesn't. But how terrible is it that the best receiver in the history of the NFL – his career ends by getting cut. Nobody wants to sign him. He just stuck around that long where the 49ers basically signed him so he can retire so he doesn't have to be embarrassed to just fade away as an unsigned player. Let's see. After the 49ers, he was in Oakland, yep. Seattle, Kansas City, and then they went back. But since we're on the topic – I, I mentioned a Rice last week. How awesome would it be, though, to bring in Jerry's son uh, for the Bengals in the draft? Maybe that's how we uh, reverse the course. We face the 49ers, and we beat them with Jerry Rice. <laughs> I like what you're thinking. You know, Not all superstitious, of but I might be a little stitious. A little stitious. Well, you know who the Bengals drafted over Jerry Rice, right? Oh, stumper for everybody here. Give Don't her, tell me, Jim. Give the pen listen in a second. You can't Google it. It's cheating, Nicholas. But if somebody actually asks us and says who it was, we will mention you on next week's episode. So stay tuned, Bengals fans. I'm not going to give the answer right now. But if you want to you know, add us either on X, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you feel like it, with who the Bengals drafted over Jerry Rice, and then you're going to feel really depressed after you have put that in there. But, yeah, we'll give you a shout-out next week's episode. So stay tuned for that. But, Kevin Case Moore, thank you for being Thank you for, you know, actually having a good career. That's a long career for a guy that didn't start in the NFL until he's 25. So resilience, a fighter. Nobody should be judged on their worst moments. So sorry to call out your Pittsburgh monstrosity there. But you also won a game against Pittsburgh the next year. 
by picking it off at the end of the game to stop Roethlisberger from getting a touchdown. So, hey, you made up for it in a way. And that game, just it's not your fault. We've talked about the 05 playoff game before. After Palmer left, it was just all downhill from there. John Kidna wasn't the guy. But let's stop you know, beating dead memories and things that hurt, and let's go on to something happier. So, Burns, what kind of random topic you got? Oh, is it my week for random topic? Oh, goodness. I'm on the bus. Why not? It's half the fun. Oh, goodness. Let's see. Um... Right. I'm depressed. I looked it up. <laughs> I'm... You just made my day worse. Because I had a bad day. Take it for the day. In my, oh, kids, oh, in, my, in my kids' words, I'm just having a bad day. <laughs> oh, so I, I don't know. If, topic. Hold on, hold on. It was I got I got the first dibs. I was like, oh, oh, your oh, little deal. Okay. So since uh, Casey wanted to uh, stab my heart a little bit earlier about Sir Joseph Daniel Votto, uh, in his story on Instagram today. Uh, the man said, if any MLB team does not sign him soon, he's going to stop putting his shopping carts back away properly and then turn the camera around and just pushed it like it was a bowling ball and see where it goes and then walked away. <laughs> Man's unhinged. Wow. He doesn't know um, what yeah. to do. <laughs> well, you know, the Florence y'alls. You know, they're, he's too old to play for them technically in the Frontier League, but they could probably use the publicity. So feel free to come play in Florence. I'll come watch you there. Didn't they play Pete Rose, Pete Rose or some shit? No. The the you're going to cause this to be R-rated at some point. Like 30. <laughs> oh, it's playing like yeah. 30. Pete Rose may come out there and throw a first pitch. I mean, he'll do anything for money and publicity. I know, right? Anyway, I'm gonna have to go back and bleep, bleep. <laughs> you know, we I did see a one arm pitcher at the all's game before that was interesting. Interesting, Abbott, for real? No, I don't know. I mean, it feels, it feels neat. You know, he had his little little nub there and he put the glove on the nub, pitch and grab the glove all in one motion. Like, that's freaking impressive. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer, so yeah, I know, but it's. You, but seeing it live is a totally different experience. I had to see him live when he played the Reds. So since we're going to go down this rabbit hole of random things and, and memory lane, uh, do you guys remember what was where the Florence Freedom are now? The Frontier. Fantasy Frontier. The Frontier. The Fantasy Frontier. Florence <laughs> Fantasy Frontier. Do you remember? They had like go-karts and... Oh, crazy. yeah. It was like... Pre F1, whatever is up in Ohio now. And yeah, it was awesome. It was cheap. It was run down, but it was totally worth it as a kid. So it's good little memories. I miss that place. Florence. What's that? That encapsulates what Florence is, you know, old, run down, but still kind of fine at times. So, like, um, I remember Fantasy Frontier because my parents were like, uh, we brought, we took my uh, middle brother up there to drop him off with some friends. And I was like, when are you guys going to take me up here to do some of this stuff? They're like, oh, we'll take you up next year. It'll be here next year. That was the year it closed. <laughs> 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 so that was my memory of Fantasy Frontier. Anyway, um, I have a good random topic. Being the age that we are now, how long do you think, if you got the chance to play in an NFL football game, at the positions that we grew up playing playing in like high school football, how long do you think we would last? I think I'd have a long, the longest career out of all of us because I'd still be holding up the play calls for uh, for Joe Burrow. <laughs> if anybody recalls sophomore <laughs> year. Oh. Uh, oh, my oh god. god everybody hated me for that but that's how i learned the playbook guys like they're like oh birds he's he's ass he's trash whoa, whoa, whoa. and really all i was doing was learning as a sophomore how to how to run the offense oh so, yeah i'd still be on the league right now 
I'm going to counter argue this too because you said position I played in high school. I was also your holder for a season, so I can still possibly have a chance to be in the NFL as a holder. I mean, don't ask, don't expect me to punt or kick off or do anything else but hold. And if it's a bad snap, I'm just going to fall. I'm not trying to be a hero. As slow as I am at this point in life, those are 300 pound men who run a four four. I'm just going to fall on the ball. And see place <laughs> okay. Yeah, for me, I'm offensive line. Uh, since I kind of played two, two positions, you know, offensive line, uh, after the first play, they'd have to carry me off on the cart because uh, <laughs> um, I would be crippled. <laughs> um, but punter, I think I could probably still do the punting. You know, I might average like 20, 25 yards with a backwards punt every once in a while. Brad Robbins. But, <laughs> you know, I can get paid millions to punt at 20 yards. That's fine. We'll see, at first, pay me thinking, league minimum. you could pay me league minimum, and I'd call all the plays for Joe. <laughs> but, but if I had to play secondary, which I was abysmal at to begin with, I would literally just they could be at the 20 and I'd be at the opposite goal line, just like nobody's getting past me. Nobody, that's where I'm staying the whole game, coach. So, oh, this is as much as I can cover is 10 yards. And if they start running side to side, I'm gonna quit. I'm, I'm just not. <laughs> I'll play kick call tomorrow. I don't feel like playing today. <laughs> Knee would give out, back would give out, shoulder would give out. Something would happen. Oh, cramp. Cramp. <laughs> I got a cramp. All this stuff on me. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of a funny story. So I remember at uh, college, so went to the esteemed, the Eastern Kentucky University. You know, that's where everybody wants to go. It's a great university. It's top notch. Mm. What are you, you think you're the Ohio State University? Yeah. I used to make fun of those guys. That's what I do because they used to always sound off that way for trainings. And I'd be like, mm, sure, 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 sure. Anyways, the, you know, the guy who ran the battalion called me up to his office and was like, hey, what are your thoughts on, you know, if they were, they're thinking about letting, you know, one cadet go out for a kickoff and you basically just be on the kickoff team and you could just, you know, get that chance. And I'm like, I think I'm probably going to pass on that. And he was like, why? I'm like, High school guys were kind of big and fast. These are the best of the high school guys that didn't make it to D1 or they transferred out of a D1 school. I don't want to die. I'm like 175 pounds, and I take classes with a lot of these guys, and they're like 230. Even the like not great ones are like 230. I'm going to get crushed. No, thank you. I was just saying the game was probably going to be Kentucky, you know, and Kentucky had a good football team at that point while we were in college. Right, it was right before the Joker years. Like then the Joker years came, and then kind of fell off again. And then they picked it back up, and you know. But yeah, it, yeah. So thank you, but no thank. Now, if you tell me if I can go get in that bat, that baseball game, sure, I'm probably not going to die. I might throw really fast, but then I'm just going to get embarrassed, and that's fine. But I'm not going to die. Football, I might actually die. Play first base. I could play first base in the pros. That's about it. Yeah, that's about well, all I got. As long as you don't hit the ball at me at second base, I'd be fine. I have, to, I can't throw it anymore. My arm hurts too bad. <laughs> well, hold on. Before I get to that point, Casey, do you remember the semi-pro league that we played in? So, yeah. uh, <laughs> the Dodgers, uh, and then the game we, we're pouring down rain, dude was a D1 pitcher for NKU, lost control of the curveball, hit me in the foot, I tossed the bat, and that's it. That's the game. That's it. And I'm like, for what? Because I threw the bat? Because, no, he doesn't have control anymore, so we're not doing this anymore. I'm like, okay, dude, you could have called it five minutes ago, but cool, thanks. I got a huge welt on my foot now, 87 mile an hour curveball. You got all the expletives with it. Beep, 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 Go, I'd I gotta, take it off the arm, anywhere in the body, I'm screwed. No, I couldn't even. Anywhere on the body, I'm down for the count. So I played so, softball in in uh, in Salt Lake, and I was playing for a, a team called Hero Sports. 
and I played short for them. And then as the season progressed, I went from short to second to first to <laughs> DH to designated hitter because I couldn't throw anymore. I was so hurt by the end of the season. I was like, nope. And then I get an MRI done and then I come to find out that, you know, I had all these tears in my arm, you know, 15 years of doing baseball and trying to run two softball seasons at the same time. It was a great time. Yeah. And the Army, you know. 15 years in the Army at that point. Oh. Nick, I'm going to tell a story on you. I'm going to compliment you, then bash you, but then I'll compliment you again. So we'll do oh, he's going to do Oreo, you. A nice little Oreo sandwich there. Okay. <laughs> Bring it on. Yeah. We're, this is that same team Zach was just talking about. And if, if you're still listening, thank you for indulging our ridiculous stories. But it's the off season, You know, during the season, we don't go down this many rabbit holes. But so we're having this little summer ball game, you know, for this amateurish team and we had a four run lead and our pitcher at the time, you know, he had been in there for like five innings. I'm like, all right, well, he's, he's starting to wear down two guys on. And I was like, well, luckily, you know, my best friend's here. He's a college pitcher. He's going to shut these jokers down. Gives up five runs when we're up four. Had to yank him. <laughs> It's really hard to pitch well when your fielders can't field a ground. Looking for a great book? Check out Once Left the Field of Valor. When Damian Shaw finds a blood-stained envelope after a battle, he is struck by a series of debilitating flashbacks that threaten to unhinge him. The letter leads him on a grueling journey of penance to present it to its intended recipient. This addicting page-turner is filled with action, suspense, romance, and perseverance. It will keep you on edge to the very end and leave you wanting more. Get your printed edition or ebook today on Amazon. Hey, I I can't help the people that signed up for the team. I only had so much. Hit the ball yeah. right at them, and the ball's going between their legs. Hold on. Casey, you invited all of us. So the team's fault is your fault. It <laughs> is, but considering. Extreme ownership here, Casey. Extreme ownership. Half the people who said they were going to play who I knew knew how to play baseball dropped out on me and then I had to pick up whoever was just sitting there as free agents in the league. And we had a bunch of fun. So I'm not going to say it wasn't a good time. It was a good time. But then back to the compliment, Nick did get a hit later in the game. Too bad at that point, the next person I brought in who said they could pitch literally had never pitched a day in their life, walked the bases loaded and then got crushed. Remember Scotty? I was going to say, I thought are you talking about me because I came in with the bases loaded and Kyle catches it in outfield we're down 10 runs at this point and he darts it to home plate right by my face and i barely like matrix like you know and yeah it was the craziest moment you came I after my head. Scotty. Yeah, you oh, came after okay Scotty after so this is all the same game that yep yeah, that sounds right that sounds right oh good right, so scotty what's that guy do with his life the time i played in that game casey my arm was shot St. Well, Catherine's Wesley wasn't too happy he was playing with us either. <laughs> hey, we had fun. That, that's that's about the main thing we'd say about that team. We may not have won many games, but we enjoyed the heck out of it. And now back to the talking Bengals topic. I don't have any random ones. I think we've talked touched on a bunch of fun stuff here. Oh, uh, anybody else have anything they want to bring up before we get to our final thoughts? Bernsey, could you uh, reenact that Matrix thing again? That was pretty cool. <laughs> I can't get up. I'm just kind of stuck in my seat here. But yeah, it was kind of like one of those things. Like, <laughs> you're only listening to the audio version. You are missing out on all of this wonderfulness. You need to be watching. Yeah, so just go to our YouTube and you can see it. And catch up. They're all there. And subscribe all right. while you're there as well. Yeah, Nick, what are your final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts are the season cannot get here soon enough because I'm tired of random topics and going off the rails so far. <laughs> When's the combine? It's right now. The combine's going right now? Yes, yeah, this week. That's why I know about uh, Brock Bowers. So we'll have our full coverage of that next week. All right, well, guess I got some scouting to do. Scouting.
So we'll have some interesting things coming up the next couple of weeks. So one of the things we're going to do is look into your all's comments, find some interesting ones, talk about a little bit more of that going forward. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. The site's growing like crazy right now. The new website is in development. I forced Nick to watch me building it before we actually started recording. So me doing coding and web type stuff is scary to say the least. But hey, it is what it is. We're going to have a nice website when I'm done with it. But just all your support. We're going to get more stuff out. We're going to hopefully get some interviews coming up soon. But check us out on all our social media. Burns, what's our social media? YouTube, Instagram, talking underscore Bengals. Everything else is just talking Bengals. All of these talkings are without the G. So if you put a G in there, that's why you're not finding us or you're finding somebody else. So talking, T-A-L-K-I-N underscore Bengals. He's not the best social media manager in the game for nothing, folks. All right, that's going to wrap it up. <laughs> it's cheap. cheap. The best person to find is free. All right, <laughs> but that's going to wrap us up. Thank you guys for our support. Keep liking, commenting, sharing, letting us know your thoughts. The more ridiculous, we'll, the more likely we'll probably mention it because I'll catch our attention quicker. But have a great night, everybody, and until next time, who day? Hey. Let's go Reds. Thank you for listening to Talkin' Bengals. Be sure to like and subscribe to Talkin' Bengals on Facebook and Instagram at Talkin' Bengals. You can also listen to Talkin' Bengals on your preferred podcast provider. See you next time. Who day?